So you make your way um, to that part of the city, um, glancing over towards uh, the first main plaza intersection of this part of Felderwin. Uh, there's a few people talking. You can see a blue flash catches your attention at the corner of your eye. Um, you can see three righteous brand soldiers that are standing with an elven woman in fine flowing clothes of green and black. Um, and she angrily gives a few offhanded orders at a distance uh, while it looks like the source of this blue flash, a male figure is standing where it previously was not. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, this figure that apparates is wearing deep blue robes um, and appears to be elven with very long white hair, also an elder elf, uh, though of pale skin, in comparison to the one that you had met previously, uh, approaches with haste towards this woman. Um, they kind of begin to whisper for a moment before he shoes off the rest of the guards and the two of them begin to walk together, kind of just the pair of them to having a conversation. Caleb. Hmm? I don't recognize either. Make perception yeah. check. Oh. You recognize those people? So I was 19. Well, <clears throat> 19. You see them, uh, you, you don't recognize them. Okay. Did you recognize them? You said that like someone we met previously. Meaning, the meaning, city meaning it was, it was an el, a male elder elven figure, but uh, just like Usa. Just like Usa. 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 Uh, but, but Usa was was of, of Guardian descent. Then. Okay. Yeah. Um, this appears to be of Northern Elf, which most most of that bloodline stems from Malayasmir, and what split off into uh, by Tyr. Okay. Learn about that too, okay? My notes look like a serial killer's. It's bad. Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're just talking amongst each other yeah. and then walk and disappear around a corner. Did we hear so. anything they said? You're uh, too far away. Okay. Um, you know. Yeah, I wish I could read lips. Do you want me to go sneak up or anything? Was the blue flash from him <laughs> apparating? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, do you continue on? Yeah. Okay. I guess. Yeah. Uh, so as you continue, yes, we are. Uh, do I recognize that person from my time at school? Uh, you recognize both of them. <gasps> mm -hmm. Holy bowly. All you gotta do is that. The woman is Lady Vesta Ragna, the Archmage of Antiquity. Yeah. Of the Cerberus wait, wait, Assembly. Wait. Vesta. Lady. Sorry, I didn't hear you there. Lady, Lady Vesta Ragna. Vesta Ragna. Vesta Ragna. The Archmage of Antiquity of the Cerberus Assembly. What does that even mean? Oh, Archmage of something, Cerberus Assembly? Of Antiquity. Antiquity. Okay. Antiquity of the Cerberus Antiquity. Of oh my god, Cerber I'm shaking right now. <laughs> I recognize him. Percy's in my right. head dissecting that title so hard right now. I know, right? I can't, though. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the man, the elder elf, mm -hmm. uh, is Martinent Ludinus Daleth. Soon. Thank you. Such a good boy. He did good. Yeah. You take care of yourself. All right. And she closes the door. And at that point, back where you rode from, walking across the street of the two figures that you saw when you first came towards the plaza. Oh. Walking and quietly talking to each other, heading towards the rubble of the apothecary. We're gonna get in the car. I'm gonna disguise myself to look like him. You do that? Mm hmm You know this guy? She kind of gives a look. Oh, shit. He has access to the king. Or someone important. Kind of gives you a tight look over Seeing glimmers of recognition in space, he's kind of turns your head from one side to the other. Oh shit. <laughs> Hold on just a second. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. She knows who this guy is. <laughs> you look somewhat like. Vince. Vince. Vince? Vince. Fucking Vince. Goddamn Denofrio. Vince, like V E N C. I know what I heard. 
Vince Nuthalis. Huh? Oh boy. Nuthalis? Nuthalis. 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 N-U-T-H-A-L-E-U-S. I was really close to the way you spelled that. Why are you looking for this one? Am I, uh, is he a shitty person? I don't know him personally. I've only seen him around a few times. He is uh, the annex to Ludinus. <gasps> the annex to Ludinus? The, the, the lead guys? Yes. Assistant to Ludinus. Oh, oh no. Oh, shit. That's oh. who he, would Ludinus have been called my liege? No, no, no. my liege would be used primarily for the uh, Dwindle. King Dwindle. Oh my gosh. And if your ears pick up the sound of your heart beating faster. You can hear the muffled sounds of conversation coming from above. You begin to reach the apex of the climb and tip over the top to arrive at the gathering of eight figures, all of which are standing but one. Sitting atop the large-backed throne itself, you see a man in his late 60s. His past shoulder length, kind of wavy, dark gray hair bunched over his brown and gold noble attire. A long, thin beard that just kind of crests down from his chin is tied from beneath, and a crown of gold upon his brow to the same symbol as the one you see on the bottom of the crest. From artworks and depictions you've seen, you now know this to be King Birchwind Wendell. Sitting to the king's right is an older male gnome of darker skin, white receding hair, and robes of matching colors to the king's attire. Um, you two make history checks for me. Not this one, not that one. My hands are drenched. History? Yes. 18. 19. Great. Both of you recognize this figure to likely be Oliver Schreiber, who is the retainer to the crown, the direct associate and assistant to the king. Oliver who? Schreiber. 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 Like the assistant to the crown, like hand, hand to the king type Kind of, thing. yeah, the retainer. retainer. To the left of the king, you see a man of similar age to the king, though he stands tall and thin from within his immaculately tailored garments of silver silks, jeweled epaulets, and billowing sleeves. His pale skin and very tightly trimmed hair on top of a clean-shaven, if intense and judging, long face. You both know this likely to be Prime Arbiter Sidnok Truscan. Sidnok Truscan. He is the leader of the noble Truscan family, which oversee much of the Truscan Vale, which is the far west area where Diastok and Kamorda currently are. Within the current council that surrounds this platform, you see an uh, age under half elf of middle age, wrapped in the most elaborate robes of the cobalt soul you've had yet to encounter. Their short red hair tangles like a flame while their expression masks their true mood with a neutral smile. Bo, you recognize them immediately by reputation, not by visual recognition, as the high curator Udala Fawn, herald of the Rexentrim Archive. Udala Fawn? Udala Fawn. The rest of the group that you're greeting here are familiar to you all. Arcanist Alora Vaisora <gasps> looks at you with a nod. <gasps> Headmaster Ormid Haas halts his conversation with Martinet Ludinus Daleth as they both look your way upon your approach. Ludinus looking in your direction. Thinner veil that's more like easily torn. <laughs> like termites, thank you. She speaks truth. And everyone kind of looks over and you can see uh, Martinet Ludinus de Leth in his older, elvish, very graceful form step forward of his robe, straightening a bit behind. There have been a number of these portals discovered across the Empire for some weeks now, each one seemingly housed by some sort of dimensional anchor. They have been gathered and destroyed. And. Uh, from what we can gather, these were possibly placed by either the Kryn or by this cult, based on the information that has been presented. While we at first thought perhaps it was to scramble and confuse us, to enable the ease of attack on our own soil, 
this dimensional puncturing, as you perhaps put it, seems to lean closer in the direction of what this cult was attempting to achieve. And um, <clears throat> with all due respect, mm -hmm. Ludinance, we have firsthand evidence that there were other members from the Empire as well who were responsible in placing these devices, not just green operatives. The king at this point has been kind of, like, kind of tugging and stroking, listening uh, you know, on his beard down below his chin, goes, well, then please tell us. We found this device, one of the mechanisms used to open these portals with a piece of this fabric that we trace back and with the help of the incredible cleric, Jester Lavore, um, scried <clears throat> and traced it back to an empire operative. Is anyone shifting? Is anyone blushing? Make an inside check. I was definitely going to look for that as well. Specifically Martinet. Okay. 19. 19. Oh, you take that boy. Oh my god. Uh, this nerve-wracking is not just not to me. Brought to you by Dwarven Forge. I don't know why it would be brought to you by Dwarven Forge. There's no Dwarven Forge on the table. <laughs> but I have nothing else to say. All tense moments brought to you by Dwarven Forge. Because we're talking from the actual fucking king. <laughs> is Fancy Pants in here? Fancy Pants. Vance. Cool. Vance? Vancey Pants? Vancey, no, they didn't, cool, cool. he didn't mention him. Yeah. Trying to be very fucking vague. <laughs> But also, I mean, oh. what else are we going to do? We have identification <clears throat> on the man who we believe is responsible for placing this device. Who have you identified? His name is Vince. The community leans back and looks over towards the Martinet Ludinus Deleth, as well as all the other members of the council all look to him and Ludinus goes, Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. I saw him with my own eyes. She really doesn't joke, ever. Blondie, nice hair, eyes are a little too close together. Works for you. He watches, he kind of brings his hand across the air and begins to draw a faint symbol. You recognize it as a spell that you use quite often to uh, to speak with individuals. <laughs> Vance, where are you? I need you here, in the castle. Vance! <laughs> He's not responding. Sends off another, another spell and goes. We bring all point search for Vince. My associate, lock down Rex and Trim. Do not let him leave. I have to ensure that we keep him alive. He also he has a he has a book, if I recall. Did you scry on him? I did. I scryed on him. I scryed on him when we. You did. When we came, when we landed in Rex and Trim. Mm -hmm. I I Laura don't remember, but. The last Jester would definitely. The last you saw, he was in the cathedral, passing over the device to the cardinal. That's right. And the scrolls that seemed to yeah, he was the inform the, the ritual that was to be set I'd below. I say that out loud. Okay, so you express all of this. Yes. You can see kind of Ludens taking it in, his eyes darting back and forth. You can see a kind of a bit of a flush to his face of embarrassment. Um, Ben Suntarius, there is not to let him leave. Extend this message to all points in the Empire, all boundaries, all borders. Frustratingly, I just recently had bequeathed unto him a uh, means of protecting from divination at his request. So we're going to have to do this the hard way. Turns to uh, look at the king, 
and uh, Udala and goes, if I might have the assistance of the Cobalt Soul, perhaps, and, and you know, I was, of course, we will also spread this information in search for this individual. Have you learned in your time with the Bright Queen? He looks genuinely interested now. She really wants her fucking beacon back. The relic. You Lud know where it is. Ludinus steps forward and goes, <clears throat> My liege, times of, law, of war make for unique circumstances. <laughs> if they've in, indeed endeared themselves to the dynasty, perhaps we could use them to shift things in our favor. Perhaps to bring an end to this conflict. The king is still looking at you and goes, and how do you propose we do this, Lord Innes? This relic they mention, Trent seems to have recently uncovered the relic that the dynasty has accused us of having stolen. The challenges <coughs> we've had in finding a ground to bargain may be turning in our favor, my liege. Using these nine, seven. Will and Sprinkle. Seven and a half. Please. <laughs> Kill me. Using these operatives perhaps as a mediation tool, Maybe we can bring this conflict to a close. Allure and the others kind of look about each other curiously. Oh. Trent nods with a smile, his eyes falling onto Caleb briefly. Ooh. Oh no. King Dwendal goes. <laughs> and the assembly feels this course is viable. Trent steps forward. We do, my liege. An optimistic view. The Martinet will take care of it for you. See that you do not fail our great empire. Your Majesty, if I may, these dealings, of course, will be very dangerous. I'm sure you can appreciate. Pardon my asking, are your intentions to deliver this relic if we can secure a peaceful resolution to this war? puts his hand towards Ludinus and Trent, and Ludinus goes, of course, it doesn't serve us any purpose. Now that we've uncovered it, to return it would be easy. And hopefully, if this is indeed their intent as they say it is, then it will end it. If it does not, that only proves that they will not rest until all of us are dead and under the ground. I am confident that we will be able to find a way to resolve this. I would only ask, do you have any further terms for engaging in this talk? Does it need to be here? Does it need to be on neutral ground? Is there anything you will not consider? The king leans forward. Well, since you seem to be the experts, <laughs> as you seem to be the experts on the dynasty with your dealings, I leave those details in your hands. We appreciate your trust, my liege. Now, he raises his hand in a kind of dismissing motion, the rest of the council around you kind of <clears throat> breaks off a bit, takes the note that this meeting has been adjourned. Stood in dragging this to distant foreign soil. Oh, well, maybe like another plane of existence or something. That'd be pretty cool. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Well, can, at which point you can see Ludinus steps up behind her. <clears throat> I'm certain you could work out the details with uh, the individual of which you are charged. <clears throat> Martinet, Arcanist. I got an idea. I'll take my leave. Good luck. And then uh, Allura, yeah. Allura heads down the stairs. You oh. called him by his first name instead of by his title. It was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Super familiar. What's uh, what's, uh, what's uh, Ikathan been doing all this time? Uh, it's actually about ten feet behind. <laughs> yeah, behind Ludinus. T money. Um, <laughs> and Trent is in, in the process of uh, like kind of gathering robes over one shoulder mm. and about to turn in your direction. No. Ludinus goes. Very well. Reach out to your contacts to aid in arranging such a meeting. We shall convene come the noonday sun tomorrow. I'll arrange for lodging within the Kamaruth cottage here within the Shimmerwood. I will greet you there in the morrow. It's going to be at least tomorrow morning before I can um, contact anybody because I'm pretty spent. 
just letting you know. You look it, but apparently you've been quite busy today, so take your rest. This is a high-end establishment. We'll convene and figure out what you plan in the morning. Thank you. Will we be escorted to this place, or are we on our own? There'll be an escort. And looks over towards the marshal, and the marshal goes, of course, Martinette. Good, I'll see you then. He turns around and exits down the staircase. As you guys finish your meal, and probably Beauregard, anybody else who's kind of keeping an eye on the vicinity, um, a, you can hear the heavy footfalls of a figure enter the central chamber uh, of the cottage, which is on the other room, the entrance room. You guys are currently in the, the tavern chamber, which is separated by a wall, other than an open kind of archway door. Um, you see the shadow kind of come in from the, into, from the, the entryway, and a voice go. <clears throat> you go ahead and you have to like get up and go over to look through, but as you, as you step and peek around the open archway, you can see they're standing uh, Martinette Ludernis de Leth. Um, he's dressed in, he's wearing his, his walking robe over, or his walking cloak over the rest of his clothes. It's like sleek, dark black uh, kind of cape lit with a long cloak behind it. And he has a cane. And uh, just kind of there, looks over, and you hide, and his eyes immediately look over and find you. Whenever you're ready. Oh, hey, man. What's up? We're just finishing breakfast. You want any, like, uh, I've coffee? I've already or? eaten. I appreciate it. Okay. But whenever you're ready, follow me, and we will uh, begin our discussion. All right, we're, uh, we're paying our bill. Give us, like, five minutes. And he goes and sits down in the chair where the previous individual was sitting and waiting. <laughs> All right. You guys finish your meal? Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did, you, did you want did did you want to come sit at the table with us? No, he's, he's actually sitting in the main entryway of the oh. of the cottage. Oh. So. Did you want to sit? Did you want to come sit over? I'm all right. Herbal tea to go or anything? I'm fine. No. Thank you. I tried. Did you set your smells, by the way. <clears throat> Let's take some bacon for the road. So All right, pocket bacon, good man. Mm -hmm. All righty. As you guys enter the next chamber, he stands. Very well. Now, please follow. We will go to a place where we can have a conversation without prying ears or eyes. And he turns and walks out into the fine cobblestone of the show ward. No guards? No guards. Wow. Bold. He's <laughs> not sweating out. So, to get you uh, up to speed with the information as I currently have it, Vence, my uh, previous assistant, has not yet been recovered, but leads are promising, and our operatives expect to close on him within the day. He's, we. he's naked? What? What? I thought you said your operatives plan to find clothes on him? To by close the end? in on him, close in on him. Oh. <laughs> he is intended to be part of this negotiation offering. If he is indeed, as it seems to be, uh, the individual responsible for uh, this, at least partially responsible for this cult, as you say, then. I think the dynasty may be of interest as to his fate as well. Also, the relic of the Kryn uh, has been confirmed, recovered, and is being readied for transport under heavy guard whenever, if that is arranged. Now, I'm sure you have many questions, and we can continue a discussion as we go from here, but I'm curious to hear your own. Uh, could you tell us where you, uh, <clears throat> your man has been tracked to, or where they think he's gone? What area of the world? Well, he um, was not so ill-informed as to uh, attempt any sort of teleportation. We think he's traveling on foot, which is in some ways more challenging to find based on some of the, the wards we have placed on our members. Individuals of such import are generally marked in a way where we can keep tabs. Hmm. It sounds like you're prepared to hand him over. Well, Do you not have questions of your own? Oh, we will 
definitely make our interrogation practices before we hand anyone over, but we are prepared, should it be requested as part of this negotiation, to perhaps use him as part of the bargaining. Are you prepared for the notion that he might just be a small part of a larger corruption? Oh, we're not stopping with just him. I mean, we understand that this cult itself exists far beyond just him and this individual of which you had done battle with beneath the Chantry. These investigations have been now opened quite heavily and are being handled by both the Organ Trust and members of our assembly. Would you be interested in uh, a possible collaboration with the other side of this war, if it meant rooting out those people within their society as well, since they seem to be communicating? If you think you can find a common ground there that they would agree to, I'm not against it. It would have to be a very carefully outlined alliance, and I am uncertain they would be willing. What is the Empire and the Assembly's current position on the dynasty and the war? Well, we have little interest in winning a war with them. Uh, the spoils of such a conflict are a wasteland of calamity-scarred marshes and uh, deadly beasts, primarily. If anything, the people of the dynasty themselves existing is a delightful buffer to the Empire from such terrible things and useless landscapes. And you personally, would you like to see this conflict come to a close? I, it is very messy. Many lives are lost. It is a distraction from much more important matters and being able to maintain the peace and prosperity of our own people. It is very challenging to do good and to rightfully guide a society when it's constantly living in fear or driven towards anger. May I ask, have you seen this beacon yourself? I have been given confirmation of its uh, retrieval and was planning to see it myself. And who gave you confirmation of its retrieval? Uh, Mast it. Master Rickathon. With us to uh, to forge a peace, or, or, or this is something that's delivered after? This would be meeting. something discussed as part of the negotiation. Mm -hmm. okay. We could have it at the ready should it, its uh, procurement be required as part of this, as I assume it would need to be, but for the first stage in which you yourselves would be handling the status of setting this negotiation, I do not think it should. I'm sure you can appreciate the convenience of um, sort of the offer of giving up the one thing that the dynasty has been so anxious to get their hands on. It would aid this negotiation if we were able to confirm that the beacon, in fact, exists and that the Empire has it. I'm sure you can appreciate the questions that we would receive as to the validity of its actual ownership. Would you wish to accompany me in uh, confirming it? I think it would. I think it would benefit us greatly if we could say that we had seen it with our own eyes. Done. Well, all of us get to go see it. As many of you as we I wish. Think that would well, be currently a... present. Okay, good, good, good. good. Where is it being held currently? Uh, I have not confirmed that yet with Master Ekathon, but that will be the next order of business. Has Master Ekathon told you where it was found? No, I've not pried too much. It has only been of uh, recent import. Mm. Um, uh, you, giving that up seems very generous uh, on on the part of the Empire. What in exchange exactly would you be hoping to get back besides assurances? This is uh, part of the continued conversation to have with you. This war is not because of this relic. There are many things that led to this conflict. I mean, there are many reasons why we have a hard time striking any sort of peace with the dynasty as long as we've been beside each other. I mean, open political unity is challenging because of their religion. The Empire does not recognize this Luxon entity in the fervor in which they practice this promised escape from the cycle of death. 
through a dubious, silent entity that is both a cause for alarm and cautiousness. The king, along with the assembly, believe that they are welcome to practice whatever faith they wish, so long as it remains beyond our borders and does not affect the lives of our people. But there's been a history of skirmishes with the dynasty that stretches over 30 years at this point. It has been escalating in that time period. There have been misrepresented information gathering troops that were captured and tortured by the Kryn that was merely gathering intel to help maintain the security and safety of our people. There have been small encounters between soldiers on both sides growing into conflict and localized incidents. There was a discovered sect of Kryn missionaries uh, found hiding within Nogvrat over a decade ago that led to uh, a skirmish where many lives were lost on both sides. And uh, this drastically began to raise tensions between both the Empire and the Dynasty. And uh, there have been a higher rate of Jorhassian creatures wandering into our land, which gives reason to believe that there may be intent in pushing them in our direction. Uh, there are growing suspicions that the dynasty covets are comparably uh, resource plentiful lands over their rather desolate landscapes, let alone a general mistrust here within the empire of Goblin Kim, my apologies, mm. due to the smattering of violent clans and uh, you know, that still claim areas of the Merrow Valley and the surrounding mountain ranges. The history of such strife is hard to erase. Regardless of how disciplined and benevolent the waste folk of Jorhas can sometimes appear to be. So, this culmination of the tension only merely erupted when this relic went missing. Okay, we should really open it up to more of a discussion, please. Well, I was going to inquire as to how integrated you are with the Bright Queen, personally. From what we heard and was discussed within the chambers of the king, you seem to have traveled to Jorhas and made some sort of arrangement, or at least ingratiated yourselves in some way that she trusted the invoking of your name enough to withdraw her troops from a direct attack on the capital. That is quite an arrangement. I think perhaps she saw a chance through uh, me to, as uh, small as it is, to make amends. Um, I'm not aware if you know this already, although I suspect you do. I was once one of Master Ikathon's students. I was not aware. Inside check. Make an inside check. Warning. All these. No way. Are so trustworthy. Fuck. Why? Oh, it's not good. <laughs> Eleven. He's hard to read, like a stone wall. I believe he would uh, see me as a bit of a failed experiment. I left his tutelage uh, years ago. Hmm. Well, you seem to have done well for yourself since then. Hmm. Trent can be a prickly individual, and his tutelage is not right for everyone. He's a very clever man, and has much to teach. We kind of heard all the things you just listed from her perspective. Seems she's also pretty pissed at the years and years and years of conflict between borders and those empire agents that you mentioned trying to keep the peace over in Jorhas, she didn't really take kindly to or see from your perspective, I think. No, we didn't take kindly to them infiltrating some of our populace and spreading their religious drivel. Martinet, both sides are peopled with very intelligent, crafty individuals. Of course, and those individuals can exist together in a very delicately arranged balance of mutually assured benevolence. I beseech you, what happened in that temple 
is a sign of worse things to come. And they are far worse than any grabs for an inch more of power. I hope you hear me. Make your persuasion check. Take us where we need to be. It will also, of course, depend on feedback from the dynasty, but we will certainly float those at the top of the list. Is All right. No. Oh, I see you said float. Never mind. Carry on. <laughs> Should we go see this uh, beacony thing then? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to say also, as, uh, as part of this uh, arrangement that we are crafting together, no, as I can tell and sense, there is quite a bit of tension and mistrust here, especially with some of the histories that may have come along with you into my chambers. As a, a token to show my interest in seeing this done properly and with a mutual respect, um, you are aware that your friend here has been responsible for quite a unfortunate incident in Zash. That, that's a perspective. Yeah, we totally <laughs> fucking skipped that part of the crap. <laughs> well, she, she, she wasn't under her own control, you know. I trust that may be the case. However, the investigation uh, by the Archive of Zadash has come to Rexentrim in the night, mm -hmm. and they have not yet made the connection. Oh. I have taken the liberty of obfuscating this individual's involvement. So, for the time being, and perhaps for the foreseeable future, you should be fine. Wow. Well, thank you for doing that. You didn't need to do that, but thank you. Well, I guess we will make our way uh, to confirm the beacon, if you are ready. Are we ready. gonna go see, are we gonna go see Trent? Take it down? Well, he's the one who's currently preparing it for transport, I imagine so. If that is challenging, you may stay behind if you wish, Mr. Widogast. DM, mm -hmm. I was thinking about a family matter. Can you repeat what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Yeah. Uh, um, cool. He's basically saying, uh, if you aren't currently tied up at the moment, we'll go and see the beacon now. Okay. She inquired if Trent will be there, and he said, most likely, as he's preparing the beacon. That's but, important information. Yeah, yeah. but then yeah, asked you if, you are, if you're comfortable or not, and if not, you may stay behind. Uh, okay. No. Uh, You'll come? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well then. He stands up, sets his tea down, which is finished. Do I just follow you then? Do we just, do we just follow you? Well, I'll, I'll take him in. I just need to inform him of our arrival. Yeah. You know, it's polite to let them know when you're coming first. Oh. I need to be better about that. I need to be better about that. Or if we've learned anything, yeah. actually. Makes a, you know, a familiar hand gesture, uh, but that's more subtle and more, it's like a, like a quick, a quickened version of the the sending spell. It's second nature. Um, to which he speaks. Um, arriving to inspect the relic and uh, confirm for our uh, negotiating team that it is indeed ready to be presented to the dynasty. Shall we? Yes. Oh, you okay, 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 okay. Begins to uh, take his hands and encircle them, leaving this kind of faint trail of light blue-white as he begins to encircle it and draw lines, and the center points begins to slowly expand, almost like a, a, a rippling ring of water until it encompasses your entire circled group of chairs. Are you going to transport the chairs, too? No, you might wish to stand. Oh, oh I'll stand. And I'll he stand. continues and <laughs> finishes the incantation. I grab my tail to make sure it's in the circle. All right, and <laughs> that familiar rush hits you as suddenly you are transported out of the tower. 
pulled away into what seems like darkness, into light that stretches its mirrors and then thrusts you back into reality. You all come to your feet. It is midday, though it is still shaded. It is, uh, you find yourself under a bunch of trees in a small clearing, uh, a dense forest. Uh, you look before you and you can see what looks to be a mountain range that climbs up in the sky. It's still clouded, um, overcast day. Um, trees you know, climb up the side of the mountains. And before you, you see what looks to be a, a unique looking uh, number of buildings. Uh, they are these tall, kind of pieces of Gothic architecture. Uh, some three or four stories, some towers, a very tall wrought iron fence that surrounds the entire locale, and there are guards posted. Um, you recognize this place. Yes. Welcome to the Vagessen Sanatorium. Oh. Follow me, please. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Lead on. Indeed. The far tower is, it's a wide tower, and it looks to be about at its full height about 80 or so feet from the ground. Um, it you know, pincers towards the top, of the, it's thicker at the base. Um, not crenellated on the edges, it's as opposed to just a thick stronghold, this has a little more design flair to it. It mimics a lot of the architecture of the central uh, mansion building. Uh, you enter through a side doorway and into what is seems to be one of two chambers at the bottom floor separated into. This is more of a, a lounge or a waiting space, in which case Ludinus goes, uh, if you would give me but a moment, I'm going to uh, inquire as to the readiness of our arrival. And he exits down a nearby stairway, out of sight. Time we say goodbye. <laughs> he didn't want to say it that well. <laughs> Ludinus is like, <clears throat> Shall we? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Please. Wolf. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you too. It's been some time. You look good. Let's go. You head back up the stairs. Whole you hear the up. whole body. <laughs> you hear the door <laughs> behind you, and as you reach the landing above where the guards are, the Marnet turns and goes, "My apologies for the tension. I was afraid, given the history, things would be a bit emotional." Turns is a challenging individual. He has much utility and has been a long-standing. Important member of the assembly, but he is challenging. Have you, ever, have you ever sat in on any of his lessons? I've not sat in on them specifically, but he does what he deems necessary. Not all things necessary are easy. Do you have an opinion on any of the conversation you just heard? In regards to feelings, thoughts, a candid emotion. I think he's not being entirely forthright with his knowledge or information about this, but I think we have more pressing matters. To press this individual right now would be a rabbit hole that would distract from something that is far more <laughs> reaching, if you will. I can always deal with Trent after the fact. Let us know when you do that, because I would like to help. I if you need to, uh, Get rid of him in any way. Uh. <laughs> there are far more useful ways of dealing with useful individuals than just getting rid of them. Are you a lot more powerful than him? It's challenging to compare power and the assembly. We all have our unique talents. Are you being humble? Awesome. I'm being honest. <laughs> While you guys are returning, <laughs> A voice comes to your mind, Jester. <laughs> this is Ludinus. Oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> to notify that Vents has been found and incarcerated. Oh! 
Interrogations will progress. The negotiation is accepted. A follow-up message continues this thread. The perceived transgressions of the Mighty Nine have been absolved. The negotiation is outlined to occur in four weeks. Oh, whoa. Cutting it close. Third message comes through. Prolonging the ceasefire as the naval forces on both sides are gathered and outfitted for travel. Additional message. To the agreed upon neutral location in the Lucidian Ocean. That's the, the completion of the update. Eventually, the one returns, goes, uh, you, you may step aboard, steps aside, and you guys are able to step onto the gangplank, onto the Wind of Aeons. Uh, there, the ship deck is mostly clear, um, beautifully made. Uh, the inlay along the edges of the deck itself and the handles have a, uh, whether it's gold leafed or at least painted to look gold, it, it's garish in the way that you would expect from the Cerberus Assembly's singular ship that is so rarely used that they have to make an impression when they do go to sea. Gross. Which to a certain extent is probably a step down from those who can jump from place to place in the world without issue. Um, so if they're going to do it, they have to do it in style. But there on the deck, you see three figures in the mid middle of a conversation. Um, you see Ludinus de Leth, the uh, older elven figure there, in the middle of a conversation with two other individuals. You see a human male um, in uh, maybe his late 40s or so, um, in this long black robe with silver and blue detailing on it. He has this kind of salt and pepper hair that's a little long, and it's, it's got this kind of curl to it, pushed to one side. You can see he's very much a mage who wants to put together a good impression in a social space. Um, can we make a history check, both Beauregard and Caleb, for me? 16. 19. Ooh. Okay. Um, <laughs> Caleb, you know this from your studies, and you as well would know from reading about it in some couple of, especially this individual. Uh, this is Lord uh, Athesius Uludan. Yeah. Who is the Archmage of Diplomatic Union. It is the member of the Cerberus Assembly that largely goes out as the ambassador of the Assembly to foreign powers and foreign interests and noble circles that are beyond the Empire, even within the Empire, that needs some smoothing over. Um, you could already see in the way that he's talking to uh, the Martinet, there's like a half-cocked grin to his expression and very much a practiced, uh, very smooth, tailored persona to a, a social, uh, charismatic, and persuasive interaction. The third individual you see looks to be another male uh, elf, though younger, uh, kind of pale skin and silver and teal robes. The hair is kind of a, a faint, dirty blonde and very short, kind of coming to a point in the front. Um, you, neither of you recognize this figure, but this figure seems to be engaged in conversation as they're all talking. The Martin Head notices you as you step aboard and goes, oh, hello. So, uh, Glad you could make it. Um, you were it? expecting us to be here, were you not? Well, you, you discussed the possibility of joining, uh, so welcome. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I, sorry, my manners. Uh, this is Lord Ethesius Uludan, who bows and goes, uh, it is a pleasure to meet all of you. What is your name? <laughs> uh, we're the Mighty Nine. We're the, Mighty Nine? We're a band of heroes who has has set out to save the world, and we're Don Tootin nearly done. Well, that is mighty impressive. I am extremely humbled by your presence. I think we've heard of you, actually. Really? I did not know that my name got around in the goblin circles. This is very exciting. <laughs> yeah, we, we talk. Well, whoever cares tells them that I say hello. Uh, we are less familiar with your friend over here. Oh, this is uh, Lord uh, Desran Thane. And points over, and the, uh, the other figure, the elven figures, the floor goes, my apologies for not introducing myself. Uh, I am just one of the lords of here, Nick Dranas, um, and I am meeting with some friends in preparation for the journey ahead. Would I recognize him then? I'll make a history check. Has he been to your mom's house? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Has he done a lot of fucking? Uh, just five. Oh. <laughs> uh, you you do not recognize this I person at all. Um, it's been a couple of years, you know. So, has it been? I don't know how long it's been. <laughs> <laughs> it's been years. <laughs> yeah, it's been. Don't. <laughs> Ludinus looks towards uh, Desrin and goes, Actually, Desrin, uh, if we could have a conversation before you leave, that would be uh, wonderful. Um, and if you will attend, I think that would be a, a, a glorious event to introduce you to some of the more important figures that are going to be part of this negotiation, as well as the local uh, society here in Nicodronus. That is an excellent idea. We want to become more familiar with each other before we set out. Of course. We are going to be working together. It is going to be wonderful. Now is probably a good time to um, state that uh, the Bright Queen, who we are here on behalf of, has requested that we inspect the artifact in question before setting sail to make sure that it is intact. That can certainly be arranged. Caduceus, you notice that uh, Desiren eyes kind of dart back and forth a bit. Uh, certainly. Uh, immediately. Uh, before, we, before the end of the voyage, we'll be happy to, to allow you a moment to inspect the artifact. Oh, I was hoping to look at it maybe before the party. Perhaps tomorrow midday, then. Very well. I Why can't we look at it now? It's not currently on the ship, and it's in the process of being prepared for the journey. Before we set sail, at the very least. Not a worry. It will be provided. I promise. All right. All right. Well, good luck. Enjoy uh, your preparation and safe voyage to all of you. Can I insight check him based on what he said about preparing it, not being on the ship and all that shit? Sure. Go ahead and make an insight check. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get it, girl. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's five. Okay. Tw 13. Hmm. 13. 2013. 2013. What? Much better year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, long for the simpler case. Um, so yes, uh, you, he seems upfront and honest as best as you can tell. He's hard to read in general, but he is, there's no signs of any sort of deviousness or deception. Okay. Um, but, uh, Enjoy, and if you require anything, I believe you can just let me know. And looks towards you, Jester. Toodles. Most gracious. Hi. Uh, Desmond. And uh, the two of them leave below deck. Um, if you could, go ahead and roll a stealth check for Frumpkin. Oh, as a come monkey. on. Oh, come on. Frumpkin always fucks it up. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, okay, I've got a baboon prepped for Frumpkin. Hold on. The stealthiest of creatures. 18. Hey. That's a go. Right? Good. That's okay. He's actually a baboon. I thought he was I like a teeny tiny spider monkey. I just searched 5e monkey on Google. That's what they taught me at Soltris Academy. <laughs> <laughs> That's huge, Caleb. A baboon is really big. Well, he's using the stats that bad. Well, I uh -huh. rolled... 16. Okay. All right. And Baboon says plus two, so just go with it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Righteous Brand, unaware, you can sense Frumpkin complete the journey beneath the gangplank onto the edge of the ship, yeah. and then grasping onto the rougher edges of the outside of the actual ship hull itself, make his way to the edge of one of the gunship portholes, slowly open it and slip barely inside. I put my arm on Beauregard's shoulder and say, just look at the ocean, it is so beautiful. What a beautiful sight to behold. Yeah. So gorgeous. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> so blue. <laughs> Take it all in. What's he saying? Can he hear anything? Okay. So as you... don't forget that okay. I can't so... hear anything. So if you try to talk to me, this I can't be, hear this you. This will be interesting. Oh, fuck. 
focusing through Frumpkin's eyes, you look into the interior of this <laughs> darkened uh, gun deck of the ship. There are two cannons within there, as opposed it looks like it was built from multiple, multiple cannons, but there's only two in there, a very beautiful make. Um, and immediately, just at a glance, you can see these are not standard cannonball-based cannons. These are arcane in nature, and who knows what they're capable of when fired. Um, it is very dark, and you watch two figures kind of waltz in with haste. Um, you hear one voice, Ludinus, say, I couldn't help but gauge your discomfort with the conversation. And the other figure goes, uh, well, I just wasn't expecting to see them. And Ludinus goes, shh, hold on. Does some hand motions, and as he releases what looks to be a simple spell, there's this faint shockwave that dissipates within a radius of them. Uncertain what it does, though you gather in the moment that it's probably some sort of a radial dispel to lock down or destroy any localized magic. Um, however, the illusion around Lord Desrin Thane vanishes. <gasps> and there standing uh, in his place is a gently floating male drow Oh. With short hair. No. Oh. He's a traitor. He's a he's a troll. So blue, so beautiful. Look at it. The waves are so beautiful. To which. The revealed Essek responds. <laughs> but he don't! Of course I am uncomfortable with this. I, I did not know they were going to be coming directly here. And you can see, like, there's conflict in his eyes. And Ludness goes, I understand. But it's extremely important how we enforce and oversee the control and the exchange of the prisoners and the delivery of the beacon. Essek kind of thinks for a second. I agree. Rudeness goes, we each have what we want. And when this business is behind us, we need not interact ever again. The assembly will share its research for the deal and beyond, and we never have to speak. And Essek sits and thinks for a second and goes, I look forward to never seeing your face again. But we're too far in at this point. It's taken a lot of effort to ensure the tracks have been covered. And no one undeserving was hurt. But I want no further part in this once this is done. Ludinus kind of steps forward and goes, I'm surprised to see such affection from such a previously cold individual. And Essek kind of turns his glance away and goes, well, I'm surprised myself. Maybe you should try friends sometime. It's gonna feel real bad when we kill him. <laughs> Ludinus goes, hold it together for the time being. We cannot have you mysteriously disappearing with that poor attempt at hiding your discomfort earlier. Do your part. All right, Nessa can announce. <sighs> I hate parties. And turns around and you watch the illusion takes over once more as his feet touch the ground and heads back out to the deck of the ship. Is the martinet floating about? Yes. I am going to go over and chat him up. All right. As you approach, 
Ah, Mr. Widowgast. Yeah. Good to see you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, the performance should be beginning shortly. Well, I'll be brief. Uh, we are about to embark on uh, quite an historic undertaking. Right. I'm wondering, we are within uh, reach of a possible end to this conflict. Cheers. Cheers to that. Yeah. It will be good to finish this war. Indeed it will be. I commend you uh, on seeing the uh, reason in cooperation and negotiation. I believe it is important to stem the tide of lives lost and to instead focus on the livelihood of those within the Empire and for us to pursue more important things yeah. than base conflict and disagreements. I couldn't agree more. The Empire, we all love the Empire. To an extent. And he gives you a keen look. How much have you spoken to my master about me, I wonder? I assume you're referring to uh, Mr. Ikathon? Of course. Only a little bit. He briefed me on your history. Mm -hmm. And uh, I must say, it's rather impressive to see someone who has gone through, escaped, and shucked the chains of the Volstrucker, and returned uh, as you have with your friends. Well, I am a dis disappointment to my teacher, I am sure, as well as many of my peers. Your teacher's a disappointment to many others. He has his uses, but uh, people are complicated, are they not? That they are. How much do you know about his teaching methods, I wonder? Quite a bit. He, uh, he put forth his designs and they were approved by the assembly and they first began developing the program for the Volstrucker. Though the extent of these things were not entirely part of the initial presentation, I understand that sometimes desperate requirements might call for unsavory methods. You are fully aware of these methods now, is that what you are telling me? I believe so. The program goes on. The program has changed many times. Uh, are you uh, alone on the ship? Uh, Trent is not accompanying. None no. of his protégés. He thankfully has no interest in such political endeavors. And he would be, he looks around the party, let's just say a terrible guest in a social environment. I don't think he would agree with me, but I am a patriot, sir for this country, and I dearly hope for a true end to this conflict. Oh, you're on the right path. Do you think we could say goodbye to this hardship in the next weeks? I think we can. Inside check. We can inside check. <laughs> hmm. Mm -mm. Twelve. He is a stoic individual who chooses his words 
carefully, eloquently, and in doing so, manages to maintain a barrier that you cannot read past. Nothing about it seems insincere, but who knows? You've been around people like this before. My father and mother died for this country. Ours. Many have, many more will. I hope your intentions are true. It's very much why my friends and I are here. Well then, best of luck in the travel ahead. I am looking forward to the journey together. Enjoy the party. You as well. And over the water towards the maroon colored, stylized ship that is the Wind of Aeons. As you draw closer, you can see the crew on deck in the process of keeping eyes out. Someone looks up and points. You can see with a spyglass in your direction. Mm -hmm. And stepping behind them, you can see the martinet kind of. Knock, knock. Don't shoot us. <laughs> the arcane anti-air gun swivels into place. Um, around. Yep. And, and as they're as they're flying through the air, uh, Caleb just uh, gives a, a half grin to Beauregard because flying is is dope. Yeah, this is great. Mm -hmm. You guys touch down. I do a little deck. like air backflip and then gracefully land, kind yeah, of silver no, surfer shit. Hell yeah! I just land normally. Right. Of course. As you guys land, the Martinet kind of stands looking and goes. So, by what do we owe this pleasure of a visit? I think we just want a bit of a check in mm -hmm. as we draw near to the uh, hour at hand, yeah? So far, so well. Things have been prepared, guarded, and there has been no anomalies beside what I've heard is the apparent attack upon your ship. Yeah, we met uh, Lady Darogna. The other evening, is she here, traveling with you? She is. Yeah. He looks genuinely surprised to hear that you met with her. Like, huh. She was very kind to check in on us after the attack. Indeed, she's quite kind. Yeah. <clears throat> Would you like me to fetch her for you? Well, Please. What? <laughs> no, I thought I heard something on the ship breaking, but I was mistaken. Huh? Um, Yes, yes, I think it'd be good if we all spoke together, including anyone uh, who is here who would be involved um, in, in deliberations. Hmm. You see him do a familiar hand motion as the one you've seen Jester produce many a time. Lady Viss, you are being requested to the deck, please, if you don't mind. You have guests. You've got like five more words. Maybe ten? No, he's succinct. I forget. Yes, P pithy. Yep. <laughs> she just apparates next to him. Well, it is very nice to see you both. Sooner than anticipated. Yes, they were just uh, saying that you had uh, met and checked in on them. So what is it you would like to discuss with us? Is well, it something that requires privacy? In time, with the lady. But until we get to that point, I think just a general sync up on what we're going to be doing. I think uh, the expositor would like to know uh, what your plans are um, for the moment. Um, and how do you see us functioning into these? Yes, the Bright Queen very specifically uh, requested that we be there to ensure that no, no f Funny business. And you are. That is why you're part of this armada. The discussion is to transpire between both our lead ship and theirs. Yes. They will be anchored together, and this deliberation is to be helmed by the emissary Lord Zedandraf himself. I will be present for this, uh, as well as a few designated Righteous Brand lead soldiers, and they will have their dignitary as well as protectors as well. Will Master Ikathon and any of his protégés be present? No, he is not part of this discussion. Is he sailing with us? No. 
All right. But um, during that time, uh, Theseus or Ladon may join as well. It should be interesting having to keep him and uh, Zadan civil. He's already taken quite a bit of my attention. Lady Vess is here as a, how do we say, ancillary force, much like you are. She will not be part of the discussions, but will be keeping an eye on the perimeter, as will you. That is your purpose here. Are you expecting any interference? I'm always expecting interference. What have you done to prepare? I have my means. And the key to preparing for interference is not letting all of your plans know. But trust and be assured, I have taken precautions. Trust comes slow. Um, Leave it all. (laughs) Very true. Uh, I I think perhaps something that would uh, assuage our nerves uh, in this endeavor is is, uh, inspecting the beacon as discussed. Uh, Lady Vest speaks up and goes, that is of course, and Martin puts his hand up and says, and you would wish to inspect right now? No time like the present. Very well. Looks to Lady Vest, goes. Come. Turns around, and the two of them begin to walk towards the stairway that leads beneath into the ship. Martin Ed says, Ah, oh, but nevertheless, you are here for a reason. And he goes ahead and snaps his fingers, and on the floor next to him, you watch as a, a kind of uh, iridescent chest kind of <laughs> appears in space there with this slight <laughs> drifting oh, smoke no, around it. Shitty bang bang. Yep. <laughs> No, um, <laughs> as soon as it appears, you hear so and it opens the lid, and there inside, with a faint, familiar, undulating gray glow, you see a beacon. Can I tell from this distance if it's the one that we saw at Pride's Call? <laughs> or is it Make a perception check. The one that we know is lost. It's bigger. What is it? Did you say? Perception. Balls. Titties and balls. Five. A five total? Yeah, I rolled a two. You die. Uh, you can't tell. Forget to do, breathe. do I recognize it? I know it's Make not. a perception check as well. You guys can both come on. I would guide you, better but you didn't me. take us. No, we didn't. Sometimes players just run off and do shit on their own. Oh. <laughs> she wouldn't know about that. No. <laughs> Where'd she go? She's painting dicks in a church somewhere. I don't know. Um, so She's fixing your ship right now. Fifteen. Yeah. Not my ship. Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, glancing over, it's not too far from you, but kind of giving it a, a, a once over. And you guys have a moment. There is a, a pregnant pause at its reveal, and they're kind of allowing you to inspect. There isn't any sort of haste to break the purpose that you're here for. Mm-hmm. Um, but its size is larger than the one you saw at the Vergessen Sanatorium. Mm-hmm. The handles and inlay match those of the ones the assembly had, or not the assembly, the dynasty had constructed. This is not the one that was recovered from Pride's Call. Mm-hmm. This appears indeed to is be one of the stolen ones. One of the stolen ones. Not the one that we towed around for a while. No, that one you gave what to the bride. Yeah. Yeah. But this one is nearly identical to that one yeah, in the, the structure around it. I see why this is uh, of such value. And two nations are at odds over it. I commend you on letting go of it. It is important to keep things under control. And hopefully, without disrupting society. To Lady Duragna, so much to learn. I am surprised you are able to let it go. Well, it is not easy, by any means. But that is 
it's just how things have to be. Seems like a missed opportunity for our home. Well, if these talks go well, maybe there will be opportunities to share without bloodshed. Does she seem full of shit? One inside yeah. check. Come on. Does she seem, Does she seem bullshit? <laughs> she is She's made of bullshit. Uh, well, 100% pure bull manure. <laughs> so, um. So the guy turned to jelly it's in airplane it's an airplane, too. 10, <laughs> 10 total. Because all the two are 10 uh, total. Oh. Whisper. Um. <laughs> I mean, she's generally pretty guarded and hard to read. Um, you're not sure if she's telling the truth, she's lying, she's putting a statement forward and is sticking to it. I hope you have a very understanding contact on the side of the dynasty. I hope so as well. We'll be keeping our fingers crossed. Yes, sir. Uh, this all seems to be in order. I feel confident this will go very well. As do I. We have all the pieces in place. We'll keep our ship very close by on the day of the negotiations. It lowers the beacon into the same chest and it closes and vanishes. We'll make sure we're stationed on the other side. Where are the prisoners? Where are you keeping them? Uh, those are being maintained by the uh, Lord Graf in the Blue Heaven. Hmm. I think we've done what we set out to do. Yeah, yeah. I have no further questions. Oh, prosecution rests. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank it was you a pleasure much. to see you. And uh, to our victorious peace talks. Yes. Thank you so much, both of you, for your time. Mm. They both stand up and kind of guide you back to the deck. Hit you later, Duragna. Looking forward to it, uh, full regard. Yep. All right. You can see now between these two ships, Lord Zedan Graf approaches and begins to meet with Kreen dignitaries on the opposing side, led on their end by the Dust Captain, who you've recognized previously as the Hand of the Bright Queen. Elite soldiers lead both sides. The Wind of Aeons approaches, but it does not get immediately close. It doesn't need to. You can see the conversations begin to ensue, and then eventually a flag goes up on the mast of each ship, signifying the beginning of these negotiations. Do we have a looking glass on our ship? I have a looking glass. Let's mm -hmm. look at what they're doing. I have a looking glass. I have a magnifying yeah. glass. I can make it even more oh, powerful. Burn your retina <laughs> strong. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> I pull it out and I pass it around to everybody. Do the, do the binoculars of the stadium thing. Okay. Well, he has one as well, so I'll share his. Okay. Um, with that and the proximities, you all kind of the Ramada Titans in. You do recognize the name of the ship that is. Uh, affixed to the blue heaven uh, is the uh, Vin uh, Radathak, which is under common for the Everstorm. The Everstorm? Yeah. That's cool. That's dope. Vin um, yeah. At this point, you can see all the ships, the Righteous Brain soldiers are now coming to the decks as a show of power. On the opposite end, you can see uh, Aurora Watch soldiers are coming to the decks as well. And there is very much a, just a display of might. Tense might on both sides, holding the line as the two center ships kind of become the core of what is transpired. I'm right. watching through the looking glass. Okay. While everyone's talking. All right. Ooh. Um, as you watch, you can see uh, other figures that appear to be members of higher noble station kind of joining and flanking the sides of the desk captain. You can see Ludinus is now joining the right-hand shoulder of Lord Seddon Graf. That's true. Can you dwindle? What about Martinet? Yeah. I'm gonna send a message to Martinet. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Hey, so you were there? Oh my gosh, what happened? What did they say? I'm, we're just so curious. I really want to know how. <laughs> 
poop. <laughs> <laughs> It seems things are open to progression in the morrow. The ice has been broken. Nobody's killed each other. I call that a win. Things okay here after uh, dinner? She kind of glances about the room. Um, they've been interesting. You and your friends travel to Isocrass at behest of S. Drogma. We did. Come on, let's dance. Hmm. And take her by the hand and lead her out into the middle of the floor. She goes along with it. And as you both begin to dance, and the, the tune here is a little more of a rhythmic sway, so it's easy enough to engage, but interesting, it's been a while since you've been in a position to try and lead, but your partner is also often switching and taking the lead. There's almost a duel within the duet of a dance. As she kind of comes by and brushes past your ear and whispers, keeping it covert while looking over your shoulder. Ludinus has been keeping an eye. Never one to trust Bess. So he requested you be tracked by Vostraka. So he followed you. How far did you get? Well, quite a bit until you came to a base of a mountain range and turned into birds. It's hard for us to follow those who polymorph. Um, but you need to be careful. Ludinus is very well aware of what has become of this. Knows of your proximity. Just be careful. What does Ludinus know of her condition? I do not know. I just know that no one has heard from her in the assembly for weeks. And you are the last to leave with them. 